This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this time we have a small smackdown. Instead of laptops, we've got phones here. Two real flagship phones for the respective operating systems. Here we have the iPhone 6S Plus. This is the Nexus 6P. Both been on the market for a little bit, and many of you keep writing and asking me, which one do I like better? Which one should you get? So I'm putting together this smackdown now. As always, it's going to come down to which operating system you prefer if you do have a preference. And I'm sure the comments section below is going to reflect that. We're going to see fanboy wars hitting like mad. Beyond that, there are certainly empirical things we can look at to say which is better, which is worse, which is different, which is the one that you should pick. So we're going to look at them now. All right, so here we have two top phablets from very different operating systems. They're not so different, honestly. They've, they've grown more and more similar. This is the Nexus 6P, a Google pure Android device. This is the iPhone 6S Plus, Apple's big phone. For those of you with big pockets, both literally and figuratively, well, these are two uh, of my favorite phones that are available currently on the market. The iPhone has a 5.5 inch display. The Nexus 6P has a 5.7 inch display. So slightly bigger display there on the Nexus. It's also a higher resolution display and let's face it upward so you can actually get a look at it. And there it is. Viewing angles not quite as good as the iPhone. This is an AMOLED display. This is higher resolution. With Android flagshipy phones, you're looking at QHD 2560 by 1440 as the standard resolution these days. That's about 518 ppi. Our iPhone has a 1920 by 1080 full HD display. IPS technology, not AMOLED, so you're not going to get the, the infinite contrast and the super rich blacks, but it's still a very color rich, color accurate display. And as you can see, the viewing angles on this are also quite good. Apple uses the bonded glass, so the, it looks like the icons are mispainted on the surface. With the Nexus, what you get is boosted colors. You don't get that kind of, uh, you know, sense that the display is very immediate and close to the glass, though. But I know a lot of you like AMOLED better, and this is a very nice example of it. It's fairly well controlled, too. It's not over the top with its color saturation. A little bit bigger, like I said. So between these two, it's really, you know, I'd be happy with either one. So those of you who are AMOLED fans versus, or those of you who are IPS fans will have your particular favorite. I will say that outdoors, even though the Nexus 6P can get pretty bright, the iPhone actually does better. It's easy to go outside the bright Texas sun and take a picture and be able to see the screen where, as with the Nexus, you can see it, but it's a little bit more work. These phones have almost the same screen size. The iPhone does not have a particularly small footprint. You can see they're about the same footprint, even though it has the smaller screen. That's because they have the top and the bottom chin for the fingerprint scanner on the front. Uh -huh. Fingerprint scanner. Both of these have fingerprint scanners, and they both work very well. Apple gets points here, though, for putting it on the front. What's the big deal there? Well, even though the Nexus has good tactile feel, so you can feel where your finger is here so it's not that hard to home in it's often easier to make sure that you're touching it right where you should by being able to see it but that's not the only thing if you have these both down on the desk you can't unlock your nexus it does have a neat little motion based wake up feature so you can actually see notifications on screen and a lot of the time maybe you're just picking up your phone to check for notifications but you're actually going to have to pick it up to access the fingerprint scanner if you want to unlock it that way with the iphone obviously it's right on the front here so size-wise, these are about the same. The Nexus is just a little bit thicker. I mean, they're both very skinny, very stylish phones. They're both metal, attractive, high-end phones. That The iPhone weighs a bit more than the Nexus 6P. The Nexus 6P is actually surprisingly light given its size. You know, it, it doesn't feel cheap light, but it's pretty light. You get the metal all around everywhere except for the oddball little glass window. Now, that's up to you as to how you feel about that. Some people think this is atrociously ugly. Some people don't mind it. It does blend in better if you get the black, and this is available in black, silver, and white, and there should be a gold color coming as well. Little plastic area here for the antennas, too breaks up the look of it a little bit, but overall it's it's certainly a unique looking phone. It kind of looks futuristic and high tech. It has straight sides. That's something that I like because it makes it easier to grip and not drop. I rarely go whoopsie with this phone. The iPhone has the cleaner design, assuredly. You know, Apple, I mean, just the fact that there's a little hump for the lens is, uh, is, a, is a big deal for not non-perfection in industrial design. It, it's certainly beautifully finished. There's no odd glass on the back, anything like that. The antenna line is very contrasty. 
we've all gotten used to that by now. I'll leave it up to you as to how you feel about that. Very slippery though. It's a very smooth, silky surface here and the sides are curved. So this is a whoopsie phone. It's an expensive drop if you do drop it too. And speaking of price, Nexus phones are priced very aggressively. It's one of the things Google works on. They want to make this affordable so as many people can get it as possible, even if it is their high-end flagship phone. As a result, your base model is $499, call it $500. The iPhone 6S Plus starts at $750. Now, you can get it unlocked for that price, or you can get it through a carrier. And the Nexus phone is not offered by any carriers currently in the United States. It is only something you're going to buy unlocked direct from Google. So this is more affordable if you got the money in your pocket to spend, obviously. The most expensive model of this is $649, and that's 128 gigs of storage. There's an in-betweener that has 32 gigs. The iPhone, again, $749 for your 16 gig, and then you add $100 on for each storage increment. The next storage increment goes up to 64, which is kind of nice, and then there's 128 gig. But here's where it gets more complicated, because a lot of people don't have the money to buy these kinds of phones up front. So if you're the kind of person who relies on carrier installment plans, and contracts are going away now in 2016, the iPhone can actually be the more attainable because you can make monthly payments on it, whereas with the Nexus, you know, you just got to shell out the money. And then, if anything, you're going to make payments to your credit card company at their hideous interest rates. Now, in terms of specs on paper, the Nexus 6P looks like the killer performer. As always, you know, Android typically has higher-end specs, like the QHD display versus the Full HD, for example. We have the Snapdragon 810. That's an octa-core CPU. It has four high-power, four low-power cores for a total of eight, four active at a given time. Two gigahertz versus 1.84 gigahertz on the iPhone. The iPhone is a dual-core Apple A9, 1.84 gigahertz again. But you know how Apple CPUs are with their power VR graphics. They perform very well. And in benchmarks, it really holds its own quite well, particularly in graphics against the Snapdragon 810. So it's kind of a wash here. And because the Nexus is running very clean Marshmallow 6.0, you're not bogged down by any... UI overlays or added software, and they both feel very fast and fluid. I know Android sometimes gets a bum rap for being laggy, and the Nexus 6P is not laggy. In terms of performance, these are both very good. They're both very good in games. Overall, and this gets into ecosystem questions, iOS games are still often better optimized. I mean, they do have a more closed ecosystem to work with game developers, so you might see a little bit better gaming performance still on the iPhone. iPhone has 2 gigs of RAM, which was a big deal for Apple, just to move up to 2 gigs. Oy. Nexus has 3 gigs of RAM, so you need a little more headroom for multitasking there. Again, they both are available in three different storage options, as I mentioned. No micro SD card slot on either of these. Apple doesn't do that, and Google does not like removable storage. So the storage that you got is the storage that's built in, and that's all there is. So do get the one that you want in terms of storage, because you just can't do anything about it later. Score a win here for the Nexus 6P. It has front-facing stereo speakers. The sound that comes at you is always better than the sound that comes out from the teeny little edge of the phone. So let's compare the speakers and see how they sound. And this is our review of the Nexus 6P. And let's go up. Finally, it's the Nexus 6P. Big Nexus on the back. You get the idea. Just so at 50% volume, it's a little bit quiet, but it ramps up to be pretty loud. And again, it is nice when the speakers actually face at you. 50% volume for the iPhone there. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and finally, I know you folks have been very patient waiting for this. We had a number of mishaps trying to get this review unit here. Finally, it's the Nexus 6. iPhone gets about as loud, but it sounds thinner and tinnier so those front facing stereo speakers help versus having your audio coming out from the little bottom edge over here which means don't hold your phone like this when you're watching a video which you just might be tempted to do especially if you're left-handed like me and hold your phone in your right hand now both of these are set to maximum brightness right now and you can see a slight difference in the color tint over here so that's something to be aware of and let's move this a little bit forward the, the iphone's a little bit more neutral so for those of you who are real sticklers about color accuracy just wanted to note that since they haven't been side by side showing virtually the same picture right now. How about battery life? Phablets have big batteries, don't they? You know, the iPhone 6S Plus has a reputation for being pretty hard to kill, and it is. It may have a smaller 2750 milliamp battery, but that Apple A9 CPU, the power optimization there is very good. And 
it is hard to kill the iPhone 6s plus and you know particularly gaming that's the thing that really drains phones and reg regular iPhone 6s and gaming you, you definitely gonna want battery packs or a charger but for this guy right here I actually do use it to play games I admit this is my phone it just keeps going and going so a day and a half on a charge if you're using the light to moderately no problem there whatsoever the nexus 6p among android phones has pretty darn good battery life and a bigger battery 34 50 milliamps and it lasts a day on a charge getting a day and a half out of the same usage pattern is is, is hard so the iphone 6s plus does have better battery life and when playing games that that really the snapdragon a10 and adreno 430 graphics it really sucks the battery down much more quickly so if you're a gamer besides often better game optimization and early releases on ios the iphone 6s plus will stand up longer now nexus 6p fights back with its latest generation of quick charge it is really quick charging in 20 minutes you should be able to get up to 30 percent 33 percent of your charge back again the iphone 6 S and 6S Plus charge pretty quickly. They don't have Qualcomm Quick Charge because they're not Qualcomm CPUs, but they don't charge as fast. And now we have a little bath toy inception here, don't we? Because the iPhone camera is running and it is looking at the Nexus 6P, which is actually looking at the bath toy back there. Both of these have very simple camera UIs. I mean, they look almost identical here. They both can shoot 4K video. They both have panorama features and so on. They're both 12 megapixels. Sony sensor likely in the iPhone Sony sensor for sure in the Nexus 6P. This Nexus 6P has larger pixel sites, which is better for low light, but it lacks optical image stabilization, which also helps for low light photography because it lets you use, relatively speaking, a, a wider aperture and higher shutter speeds to let more light in. So in terms of photographs, both of these take really good photographs. And if you're a real photo nut, it'd be even still hard to say which one takes the better photographs. They're both that good. When it comes to video, the iPhone 6S Plus takes better video, both 1080p and 4K video. And we've actually used this for some video footage when we've been in events and we wanted to shoot some, some products for you and whip this out instead of our big old standalone camera. And I, I know you guys couldn't tell the difference because it looks that good. So for video iPhone. If it's just straight photo, then both of them are good. And then the Nexus 6P is not hideous for video. It's just not super stellar. Last little doodads, the iPhone does have 3D touch. Press and hold to get other effects. Now, Apple uses that to good effect in the built-in applications, but developers really haven't jumped on it, which is surprising. So we haven't seen a whole lot done with it. So I'm not really going to count that as a great selling point at this point. And in terms of ports. We have the lightning port, of course, on the iPhone. We have USB-C, a new thing for the Nexus 6P. Accessory-wise, you know how it is with Apple. There's a, the accessories have accessories at this point just about, don't they? You've got speakers, you've got docks, you've got chargers, you've got everything imaginable, MIDI interfaces, all sorts of stuff going on for iOS products. For Android, less so. And for the Nexus 6P in particular, not too much. You know, a couple of USB-C cables and that's about it. So for those of you who really love accessorizing and getting speakers and docks and all those kind of things, well, the iPhone is probably going to be the more exciting purchase for you. And also, if you have several iOS products in the family or you own an iPad as well, with the Lightning port, you can generally share your accessories across a bunch of devices. And while we're talking about accessory eco ecosystem, there is just the software ecosystem. Now, I like Android just as well as I like iOS. They're different. As always, next, the Nexus is more customizable in terms of your home screen, in terms of the things you can do with it if you want to put custom ROMs on there, all that sort of thing. iOS is pretty much the same look that it's always had, but, you know, it works. It's very efficient. It's very intuitive and easy to use. I leave it up to you as to which you prefer. The, both of them have huge application ecosystems at this point. Some people say that, you know, the iOS apps look a little bit more uniform, a little bit slicker, a little bit better. And that probably is the case, but honestly, Android apps aren't that anything I would complain about that much, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, unless you're used to iOS and you just can't really stand the look of anything else. So there it is.
iPhone 6s Plus, Nexus 6P. You know, I want them both. Lucky me, I actually do own them both. They're my two favorite phones currently on the market. The Samsung Galaxy Note 5 still gets a special little love there for that S Pen too, but for those of you who could care less about the pen, these two fabulous phablets, well, they really are fabulous. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these phones, read our written reviews, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.